Let's get into our next conversation now. Amid irregularities, intimidation, voter suppression and violence that tainted the credibility of the governorship and state assembly elections held at the weekend, including the presidential election uh, held on February 25, the Independent National Electoral Commission has declared some candidate winners of the SSIs, why some have said they will take the matter to court. While some analysts and human rights group have attributed the low turnout to intimidation. And so we want to look at the post-election after or post-election uh, uh, impact on the economy and what next and tax ahead. Well, we have our guest joining us now, virtually Olushola Oluweyeye, uh, policy analyst and an insurance expert. He joins us now. Thank you for finding time to join us again. Good morning, and I'm excited to be here this morning. Yeah, good to see you, and I'm excited to have you once again uh, on board. Uh, so let's start from your assessment of uh, the outcome of the election and the impact this outcome of the election will have on a perception on the economy. Uh, that's one. Secondly, there are those who say uh, it, when it comes to election here, there's always an, a, an, a fallout or impact on, on the economy because uh, the government most of the time is distracted from the core issues of address uh, that are uh, uh, affecting the economy and then they turn attention to um, election. So did you think that was the case in this uh, 2023 election? So let's start from the first one, your assessment and what do you think the outcome or the impact will be on the, on the economy? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, uh, this is to starting on a note on the assessment of the election. Uh, it is important that we note that uh, the two dates that were set for the presidential uh, for February 25th, that was held, and the second one was shifted by one week, and now we are behind the elections. Mm -hmm. uh, all we are dealing with now is the outcome, which are the results, and uh, for those uh, who won, you know, uh, most of them are in jubilation, and those who did not win, are already preparing their way to go to court or the tribuna uh, to be able to see how things will pan out. But majorly, uh, it has been um, uh, a major, a major, major milestone for the country and for the economy as a whole, uh, because this has held the economy down for a reasonable period of time. And now that the election has been held, we are moving on, we are moving ahead uh, because uh, to a reasonable extent, over 50 to 60 percent of the results are already, uh, you know, been announced and majority of the parties and people involved are already taking uh, key next steps. So uh, this impacted on the economy, the, you know, uh, it has made the economy to be uh, a bit uncertain uh, right from the get-go eve of the election and up till now uh that now that hello hello mr louie I, I want to quickly chip in um how significantly um do you think the uncertainty will affect the the uh, the economy going forward uh so how significantly with this uncertainty affects the economy. Uh, that's, I just wanted to chip in that so that uh, you can continue on that thought. Okay, thank you very much. I, I, you know, that was one of the reasons why I tried to use a percentage to look at how the out. Uh, I guess a bit of um, audio disconnection there and distortion of, uh, you know, flow of conversation there. But uh, I would like to hear what uh, Oluya you have to say about that, uh, because uh, if there are uncertainties, then it means that we should see that uh, impact on the economy significantly or less. Are you there now? Okay, yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, please go on. Okay. Now, following the impact of the presidential election uh, with the level of uncertainty that followed it uh, with uh, the Labour Party and PDP, uh, trying to, uh, you know, use uh, the medium of uh, the court and tribuna 
uh, to find the result of the election. I think uh, what came out with the uh, governorship election uh, will give another uh, level of uh, reaction again, uh, which will further impact on the, uh, the economy. So, like I mentioned earlier, 6070, uh, you know, the way the whole thing has moved, uh, quite a lot of some of the results have been reasonably accepted. Why? Okay. Um, I mean, Mr. Oluwaya, well, I, I think we're making a good sense there, just that uh, we just couldn't um, get that last part of your uh, position there. But let me quickly, okay, are you there now? I'm here, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, please uh, wrap up on that thought first. Okay, so my, my, my conclusion, or uh, more or less like the way I would love us to look at it, is that 60-70% uh, of the results have moved in the way or in the direction of majority of, you know, what Nigerians maybe hope for. So maybe 30% is what will still be creating some level of uncertainty in which would definitely impact uh, however, with the, those who have won the election, uh, coming out with good plans, making pronouncements, will quickly uh, coming up with a, a, a team that is going to work on the economy going forward, will really, really help the economy to position itself uh, going forward. Mm. There are schools of thought that um, during the election year, the government usually is distracted with uh, how to go about, um, you know, supporting his candidate campaign and all of that. But did you think that uh, the president was uh, distracted, right? And if it was, did you think the economy suffered that distraction or the effect of that distraction? Okay, uh, you, you, you made a very good assumption, but uh, looking at the way uh, Nigeria president this time around, uh, President Buhari has been able to address this, uh, majority of the key uh, cabinet members were not uh, allowed to be actively involved in the campaign, and you can see that Mr. Uh, the, the the VP was not a, a, at all involved in the process. Uh, so also, uh, I know there are other uh, senior cabinet members that were not also allowed, so as to pay attention uh, to the economy. However, majority of the challenges we are faced with the election is. Uh, too many reforms coming in at the same time. So I think we had a different uh, experience this time around uh, from the reaction from Mr. President. Mm. So, so now that elections are, have come and they are gone, so what next? Uh, not undermining litigations that are going to, there are going to be the gale of litigations at the presidential poll and of course at the governorship poll because we understand that uh, even some political parties have already, you know, rejected or are contesting, are going to be contesting the result of the outcome of uh, the election at the state level. Um, so going forward, so we do know that, yes, there are going to be litigations. But again, what next in terms of uh, getting the economy back to the path of growth with regards to making, uh, building economic team policies that will drive the economy and, again, boost and sustain investors' confidence. Okay. Um, thank you. Considering some of the bills that were signed by Mr. President last week, uh, this is one of the uh, things that is going to be giving uh, investors back some confidence. Uh, Mr. President has signed a bill that gives autonomy uh, to states to be able to generate their own power and distribute power. Uh, there are quite a lot of bills that were signed in uh, just to be able to restore in, you know, confidence back into the economy. And looking at how the election have panned out, I think most of the political parties, uh, majority, uh, the ruling party has been able to maintain uh, their hold in some of the major states, uh, which I believe uh, they, this will allow us to be able to... Oh, no. Uh, well, I, I, I wish uh, we, we get the 
the conversation, you know, we get that flow of, of, of conversation going with uh, Mr. Oluwe, uh, it just the fact that uh, there's a disruption there. But I, I think a quite uh, interesting Hello. point you're making there. So, but I would like to hear uh, you, you know, wrap, I mean, uh, continue on that path again as regards to the policies and um, particularly you also mentioned that uh, the, the president signed some bill into law uh, last week. So talk to us about that. Okay, now the decision to sign in some of those bills at this particular point in time has also, uh, re you know, reflected in some of the reactions and how the economy uh, will respond to states now being able uh, to generate their own power and distribute power and, uh, you know, trying to restore, you know, confidence back in the economy. However, most of these things are all happening almost the same time uh, with other you know policies also uh, coming uh, in place. So, but like I mentioned, the second part we should look at is that most of the uh, uh, states that are being uh, managed by the ruling party are also being maintained. Uh, we've seen that happen in Ogun State. We've seen it happen in Lagos. Uh, and we have seen uh, quite a lot of uh, states like even uh, Cross River, I was, you know, Cross River still was also maintained by APC, and you know uh, this will allow the new administration to set in uh, to settle in uh, on time. And we've also seen it reflected uh, in the Senate. So I think the major thing that will bring about that immediate response to the economy is you know a pronouncement about a team that is going to be running the economy going forward and making pronouncement. I'm sure with the new administration, the issue of subsidy uh, will be one of the priority uh, to be addressed very quickly uh, as uh, they move in into action. Uh, because once that is also done, you know, it restores quite a lot of confidence back into the, into the, into the economy. Mm. Okay, you talk about um, the president signing um, some bills into law uh, and you made mention of uh, power decentralization so let's look at uh, the change that is likely to bring into the economy into the system what is likely to play out with that with the signing of the bill that and uh, that we now have in the system okay now one of the major critical impacts that that bill is going to uh, bring about is now investors have more confidence that everything can now be handled at a state level. I don't need to generate and send all the power to the central grid before distribution is being done. And then this as you know the 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 the, the meet here there between the Jenkos and the Disco, uh, where government is sitting in the middle of all the uh, privatization, this has now been given to states to manage from end to what, end to end. And this gives investors more confidence and be sure that we can price this in the right way and we can deliver the right value and get you know, our, our, our money for whatever investment that we are, what we are making. Less level of intervention of what government in the whole of this. Uh, you can't afford to generate power uh, maybe somewhere in Lagos and then you have to send it to central grid before it is being then being distributed uh, before uh, you know you know how to even generate your 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 returns what back. So this is going to make it a bit more seamless and allow investors uh, to be able to uh, to come in. This is going to help the industry and is going to increase value uh, across board total uh, you know value around around the whole uh, value chain. Every stakeholders will now have more confidence in doing what they are doing. Mm. Mm. Okay, it's good that the president has signed some, um, you know, bills in, into law. Uh, interesting one there, but there, there are concerns that, uh, you know, th um, th those bills may likely uh, be thwarted because every government likes to come up with uh, their own idea and, and initiative. So, do you think or do you see the incoming government, you know, sustaining or? Um, uh, implementing those bills that have been signed into law 
do you think the co incoming government stands the chance, you know, to start implementing those ones? Or do you see them, do you see policy somersault in the next administration? Okay, thank you very much. That's, that's a very, very hard question. And that question coming in at now is a very good one because this is part of the initiative of the APC government right from uh, get-go. Uh, even right from the time uh, Tinubu was running Lagos State uh, as, uh, as uh, you know, governor was when the proposition for states handling their own power and because, you know, then the central government was PDP and the, uh, the states uh, in Lagos was running with another government, uh, that did not allow that uh, to go well and it took quite a long time. And here we are last week, this brought to life at the end of the day, Mr. President signing the bill at a time where we have a president-elect who was part of the people who were proposing you know, who have even made a lot of effort to make this happen uh, by signing some contract and deal uh, with a foreign organization to be able to start uh, private generation of power and distribution as at uh, 1999. Mm. Okay. Just so before, I don't see I don't see any I, form of some sort happening. Mm, because I asked that question because some people are saying uh, this last minute uh, rush, you know, to. Uh, perhaps create a legacy or to make a good image of yourself uh, may not stand the test of time because of, of uh, the record of policy somersault with every successful government. That's why I asked that question. But just before I let you go, let's talk about the, the task ahead. That's a huge task ahead. You mentioned earlier about the subsidy removal. That is one. And we have other issues, other structural issues uh, at hand uh, that are staring in our face. The issue of insecurity is there, that farmers have not been able to go to farms, and that is why you see that the food inflation has gone up. But so for you, what is the, in terms of addressing key tasks ahead, what will be the core task that needs to be addressed in the coming, I mean, if the coming administration most I, I, I can't hear you any longer towards okay. the tail end i didn't get to hear you but i, I was i was clear about your initial uh, okay. question so i was i was can you hear can me can you now? hear me please yes i can hear you i don't know if you can hear me now but okay it's better now i can hear you okay okay great so i, I was asking you that for you what would be the major task all right uh, in the next, the network is gone again. Oh my goodness! I mean, but if you can hear me, though, uh, uh, please, perhaps uh, I don't know. But let let me just repeat the question again. I was asking you that for you, what would be the major uh, issue or task ahead of the incoming government that will help the government hit the ground running? That will help the government. The with network is really bad. I can't hear you at all. Oh my goodness. I, I think at this okay. point. Okay. Okay. okay just talk yeah, to us about. Finally, just give us your last thought about the coming administration and the task ahead. Okay. With the coming administration and the task ahead, uh, it's important that uh, most of these uh, issues around the court cases uh, get settled on time uh, because the new administration coming in have quite a lot of uh, work ahead of them. And that's why the first key thing we'll be looking out for is the kind of team that is going to be put together uh, to start addressing the economy. And first of all, the issue of subsidies should be one of the uh, first uh, areas that needs to be addressed. And then the issue of uh, insecurity, uh, which has you know, affected quite a lot of things in terms of agriculture, in terms of uh, you know, businesses being able to thrive. And I know that by the time the team is being put. Oh my goodness, um, I, I, I wanted you to wrap up and so that uh, we can bring this discussion to a close, but I don't know if you can hear me, but I just, I would have loved to hear the last part of um, your that conversation there so if you can hear me i wanted to hear the last part of that of, uh, you know that line of thought uh so who can wrap up and close up on this conversation okay so can you hear me now yes please go ahead okay 
um, the, the, the team being put together by the new uh, administration is going to play a critical role uh, in determining what next. And uh, one of the key issues are uh, area of uh, the economy, stabilizing the economy, restoring confidence back into the economy. And one of it to show that they are very serious and they want to make things uh, happen is by starting off with uh, the subsidy issue. Okay. And I want to believe that they will be removing the subsidy. And then from there, we can be addressing security and others. Thank you. All right. Lushola Oluwe, policy analyst thank you for coming on board we appreciate your time i'll still to come after the break we'll turn attention to the global oil market as we look at the uh oil market and of course as talks so we'll be back in a moment please stay with us <laughs>